it really is cross genre mm -hmm. and rich in a way that it just keeps building, right. building, building. Hello, and welcome to the Arts of Language podcast with Andrew Poudois, founder of the Institute for Excellence in Writing, or as many like to say, IEW. My name is Julie Walker, and I'm honored to serve Andrew and IEW as the Chief Marketing Officer. Our goal is to equip teachers and teaching parents with methods and materials which will aid them in training their students to become confident and competent communicators and thinkers. This, this actual conference, we titled it this year, Teaching Writing Can Be Easier Than You Think. And we were kind of playing around with different things. The idea is teaching writing can be, it is hard. If you think about it, how do I teach writing? I don't, I don't know how to do that. And I actually was a school teacher for a couple years and really struggled myself with how to teach my students how to write. And then I homeschooled my kids, kind of the same thing. And when my oldest was going into junior high, I met Andrew Pudua. And even though I knew how to write for reasons, probably because my dad read out loud to me in great quantities yep. as a child, yep. memorized a lot of Mother Goose, a lot of the things that Andrew was talking about with the uh, previous session is very much a part of my primary preschool years. But because I could write didn't mean I knew how to teach writing, and especially middle school, my oldest son, we would argue a oh, lot. No. I know. Can you imagine? And so what Andrew taught me with this program, with this method, was how to accomplish the goal of teaching your children how to write without tears, without arguments, and, you know, well, we don't guarantee that, but we can probably guarantee fewer tears and fewer arguments. Fewer, t fewer <laughs> tears and fewer, and, and we'll talk about the guarantee because we do have a 100% satisfaction guarantee on everything we sell. So if you were hoping that your children wouldn't have tears and maybe there was one tear trickling at the beginning before they listened to one of your jokes, you know, if, that, if you're dissatisfied, we'll be happy mm. to refund your money. But mm. we'll get to that in a minute. So l I wanted to just kind of take a little walk down through... Um, product lane. Product <laughs> lane, exactly. And the very first slide that you see is our flagship product, the Teaching Writing Structure and Style. This is the teacher training course. That's it. So Once I, upon a time, that was it. That was all there was. And when yeah. I first started working for IEW, this may have been the only writing course you sold. But this teaching writing structure and style, this is the writing methods class that I should have gotten in college. Mm. You know, reading, how to teach your kids to read, how to teach students math. You have those classes when you're doing teacher training. Yeah. But there wasn't a writing methods yeah. class. It's very rare to hear someone say, yeah. I had a writing methods class. Exactly, and what you'll see on the screen is our nine units and Andrew will be demonstrating in our next session what units one and two look like. We start kids on a pathway of learning to write where we give them the tools, like Andrew was talking about, and the confidence to be able to say, hey, I can do this. That was easy. That was fun. Can I do that again? And we have testimonies over and over That's again like about hear. students who do that, but it starts first and foremost with teacher training. So whether you're a homeschool teacher, whether you're a hybrid school teacher, whether you are teaching in a classroom or a co-op, this teacher training course is what you will want to learn our whole system. To learn our whole system. And when I learned our whole system back in the day, I shouldn't say our, because at that time it, I wasn't working for you, so it wasn't our system, it was your system. I came up with my own lessons, but you get, this is a video course that uh, forever streaming, so forever streaming, frequently asked question, how long does forever streaming last? When does that expire? Till the end of the world. Forever, <laughs> well, <laughs> as long as we can keep our website up, forever streaming, this is, you have access to the video course forever, as long as, and it's not transferable, so you can't sell that, but it's right. yours forever. And then there's a, a seminar workbook in there, 
yep. that, that has all the... And if people want DVDs, they can still get it, right? Yes, yep. they can. So we do have DVDs for the holdouts of a few of you. There's a seminar workbook, and you'll just go through this as you're learning the method, page by page. Lots of great information in the seminar workbook that Andrew doesn't go through. You don't read every page of this. That's no, not what this no. is. You just kind of brush <laughs> over that. But one of the things that's included with this video course is our premium membership. Now, a membership, you get a one-year subscription to our membership that you can renew year after year. The first year, if we were to sell that separately, we start them off, it's $100. But you can renew for $39 oh. every year. Okay. And with that, you get all kinds of tools that will help you become uh, capable of teaching the students in the classroom without having to buy anything else or your own students. Source text, files, articles, uh, word lists, free downloads that you can print and give to kids, yep. and the all-valuable checklist generator, right. so which is worth way more than one Starbucks drink a month. Uh, yes, which is essentially the cost <laughs> of that. So that premium membership, that's how you get the checklist generator. So the one question that we had about how do I customize, customize. the checklist, that's it's the checklist a generator. A big help, a big help. And in your class today, you'll be having some samples of that checklist. Giving out a checklist. Yeah. So if you want to see what the checklist <coughs> look like, go to IEW.com slash conference hyphen tools, download the student handouts, and you'll see that's, that Andrew generated that on our checklist generator. So that's only available in the premium membership. But if you teach in a classroom, if you're comfortable making your own lesson plans, truly this is all you need. And this is a really good investment of yourself. But if you want some help, that's the second way to teach writing and that's with our theme base now this is only showing on the screen six theme based products but we have 14 we have 14 yes wow and I think we have most of them here but this one right here well and, the, and they're color-coded yes okay I'll, I'll mention that so this one right here this is uh, a little heftier than what it was when you first wrote oh, it. oh that was the very first one yeah. and you wrote this with dr. Webster yep and uh, we made some modifications to it recently and added in some vocabulary cards and made this. This is a level B product, which means middle school, but it's a tough level B product. It's, a, a, yeah. it's probably more for high school, but this was the very first theme-based book. This is lesson plans all laid out for you. So as your students are learning units one and two, there are source texts and checklists and exercises right in here. These are lesson plan books that you can use either in a classroom or one-on-one -on -one with a homeschool student in a hybrid school in a co-op. And we have many of these Bible-based writing lessons. If you're studying history, we have world history. This is modern world history. We have US history, medieval history. If you're from Canada, we even have Canadian history-based writing lessons. And you contributed to that as well. You wrote the source text about the snowmobile. I did. Which Bom is very Bombardier. Fun. And where was, I was at an airport recently that I saw that. I think it might have been the Dallas airport. Well, they make airplanes now. Oh, they do make airplanes. Yeah. Okay. They graduated from snowmobiles, snowmobiles to airplanes. To but airplanes. Yeah. But so what, what I love about our writing method is we don't tell students come up with something to write about, at least not at the beginning. Later on, we will yeah, with, yeah. once they have tools. But we give them something to write about. And this would be an example of something interesting, fascinating, that we're giving to the students to learn, and then they really learn. Wow, there's a, the m lunar land. Right, well, we're trying to find things that have interesting or useful information right. that are at an appropriate mm -hmm. reading level right. for that age of student, right. and hopefully that catch their imagination as well. Right. Uh, but yes, then quickly, you know, we move into stories, we mm -hmm. move into uh, different types of reports, we have writing from pictures. Right. We have multiple reference research, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which was the Canadian Bombardier thing. Yes, yes. Uh, and then Unit 7, inventive writing, and then Unit 8 with essays, Unit 9 with critiques. So yeah. uh, it really is cross-genre mm -hmm. and rich in a way that it just keeps building, right. building, building. Right, and so when you, when you say that, it reminds me to say, when you learn the method, it's just one teacher training course, but we have student, we have materials for students year after year because we want the kids to go through the nine units year after year so they internalize it. They have different content. They're learning how to become good writers, 
that can then become any type of writer. Sure. Whether it be a children's story writer, what it, whether it be, okay, you have to tell the joke about the, the boy went to his guidance counselor and he said he wanted to be a writer. This is one of the structure oh. style for students. Year two level B, I know that because he, I just- He went to his guidance counselor right. and said, I want to be a writer. I want to write things that just hit people right in the gut, that just evokes powerful emotion. And the guidance counselor says, well, you should probably try error messages for Microsoft. Yeah. <laughs> so there's uh, any type of writer is what we're, we're attempting to go. But those are our theme-based theme based writing lessons. Like I said, there's 14 different ones for all four of our levels, primary, elementary, middle school, high school, at that reading level. So it really doesn't matter what grade they're in, right. how old and, they yeah. are. People say, what do I need for a sixth grader? Yeah. And, and I always say, well, our stuff is grade reading level. Right, so right. you could have an older student whose reading is a little you know, lower, mm -hmm. and you could certainly choose a level A. Right. You could also have a student who reads very, very well, and right. you could go up. So right. it's really flexible. Right, yep. Re oh, that's here. Okay. okay. All right, so that is our... Second option. Right, is a theme-based you, book. You, you learn the program yourself. Right. And then you get books of lesson plans. Yeah, don't forget the teacher training. We've had parents or teachers just do it this way, and you have you'll have results. But we have an adage around here: good enough isn't. So we really want you to have good enough is good enough. You really want it to be well, excellent. best. Yeah, we want the best yeah. results. Good, and so better, best. I never, never rest till my good is better and my better. Best. What musical is that from? I sang it in preschool. Oh, is that right? Oh, that's cute. I thought it was a musical. All right. So now what is our third option? Third option is the SSS. Structure and Style for Students, which was recorded in this very classroom. I'm curious to know how many of you have used our Structure and Style for Students program. And you might see that there's something on the desk over here that we're going to be using later. That was one thing that we enjoyed. <laughs> doing as we were setting up for the Structure and Style for Students is to find a prop that would sit on the corner of the desk that would make the students wonder, what are we going to be talking about today? And also, Structure and Style for Students, Year 2, Level B, the source text was on Madame Curie. Oh, yes. And we didn't have anything on the table. And then one of the tech guys came in with gloves on and a beaker with Gr bright green and you know just like it was very fun so it was really fun just playing with those props she's watched all the videos i've watched none of them this is true but uh, just so people get a sense of the scope yeah, yeah. it was um well almost four years ago mm -hmm. we started yep and we planned to replace some previous products mm -hmm. with much more comprehensive yep. so w i taught three one and a half to two hour classes every tuesday yep for 24 weeks, yep. for two years. For two years, yep. So if you multiply that out, it's 144 video classes. And really, the, tr the tough one was I had to tell a different joke at the beginning of every yep. single class, yep. which meant I needed 144 jokes. Yep. And I think about the middle of year two, you could tell I was kind of scraping the, <laughs> the barrel there. Uh, but we did it. Yes, we did. And then, of course, uh, we've used the studio for many other yep. benefits. But these these are, if you want to see the little, I don't know, what do you call it, a trailer, promo video, whatever, yep. uh, just go to iw.com slash SSS. Correct. And you can watch, uh, you know, the kids and some testimonials. Yep. It's, it's short. It's just yep. a few minutes. Yep. Not much to look at here. Right. It's just a box. But I'm going to open one. Right. Our shipping and packing department does a really good job of getting this all packed up. So, so the first thing you see, and there's a whole video on. You're going to run out of hands here. Pretty yes, quick. that's the forever streaming card. That's Don't got lose the code. That. That's how you get it. Sure. And this is called our what's in the box flyer. Okay. This tells you everything that's in the box. And then these, I, they're kind of bundled together. Lots of plastic. <laughs> I'm afraid we used a lot of plastic glass. It's depressing, but it is the modern world. It is the modern world. So this is a student binder that your student, it comes actually, I'm going to take these out of it, 
the student binder comes completely empty because they're building this portfolio of, and then uh, almost empty. You know what's in the back? Oh, for unit six. Yeah. Yeah. We put six big pieces of paper yeah. in the back. And for so unit then six. They, they get all these pages and they put the pages in the binder lesson by lesson. Yeah, there's directions here of what to do with these pages, or like when to hand it out on the video. It says, look in your packet. There's so many directions. You, you cannot 35. possibly mess this up. <laughs> no, you can't mess this up. And then the teacher book. So that's a really, this is a comprehensive course, and it actually has in here the suggestions for daily breakdown of how you can do and lessons. And everything that I wrote on the board, yep. in case you want to be able to refer. Yep. Yep. And then, of course, very, very nice addition my pillow. <laughs> He's throwing a pillow for you. No, it's That's not quite a my pillow. <laughs> no. it's, it's just more plastic. Yes. It keeps the thing <laughs> from getting banged around inside yeah. the box. Yeah. So that's that. That's, that's what's in the box. And so there's actually two ways you can use this. You can sit down with your kids, of course, watch the video with them, let Andrew be the teacher. And he's very engaging. One of the things you were hoping is that the kids at home would be as engaged and raise their hand along with the kids in the classroom. And we know that's true because we got a letter from a student who said, you raised, she raised her <laughs> hand, but you didn't call on that's her. That's true. That was pretty cute. She raised her <coughs> hand. And you didn't call on her. No. That's very sad. But the other thing that you can do, and this is the fourth way you can use our materials, is you actually, you as a teacher, watch Andrew do it and then teach it the same way, just like using you as, right. you could even use his jokes. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I don't own any of these jokes. <laughs> no, no, and so, you know, pass it out. Pass out the papers the same way Andrew did, and then you just need one set of those. You'll each, the students will each need their own handouts mm -hmm. because we do not allow copying of handouts, right. but. But we've, we've got people in five day a week schools, mm -hmm. hybrid schools, online schools, yep. we've got a lot of people kind of doing just that. Yep, and I'm, so. and I'm a little hesitant to say, we offer online classes as well. We have very skilled instructors. The reason I'm hesitant to say it is- They're all full. Not all of them, there's oh. just a few spots available, okay. but we do want to offer as much help as we possibly can. So those are the four different ways. Learn it yourself without any student materials and make up your own student materials. I did it. It's one. The second way to do it is to use a theme-based book. There's your lessons all laid out. You'll still want to know the teacher training, yep. but that's the theme-based. And then number three is let Andrew be your student's teacher on the video, or you watch the video yourself, learn how to do it, and do it yourself. So Imitate that's me. It's right. That's right. Yep. So that's our, that's our basic idea of how we teach writing. And, but we have a few other products that I'd like I, to talk I about. I actually know a couple people who teach college classes mm -hmm. and use level C uh, material. That's great. In a college class. Yeah. And it's as challenging as they need. Yeah. 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 Good. Okay. What's next? So grammar. grammar. I love our Fix It Grammar program. I know you do. And I would like for you to share the story of how this grammar program actually came about with the not me story. Well, yes, I was kind of looking at the kids I was teaching, this is 20 some years ago, mm -hmm. saying, you know, they, they all make very similar errors, for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. either homonym errors or capitalization or punctuation errors or incomplete sentence problems. Mm -hmm. And you can spend a tremendous amount of time trying to give little mini lectures on mm -hmm. everybody's paper mm -hmm. and it just destroys your life. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, I'm just going to write some stories that have th similar to the errors they make all the time. And uh, so I just would write a silly little story and, and, and put by not me. Mm -hmm. So not me was the author because no one would fess up to writing something so ridiculous. And I hand it out and say, okay, you've got you know five minutes. Find as many things as you can. Mm -hmm. And then we go through and see. And if everybody got some of them, they were happy. And some of them got all of them, they were mm -hmm. happy. And if somebody only got one, well, they mm -hmm. got one and they learned something else. But uh, that's kind of, and so I, I was encouraging other teachers to do this. Mm -hmm. But it's time consuming. Mm -hmm. You've got to sit there and contrive mm -hmm. this thing and figure out how to make it interesting or whatever. Mm -hmm. And so I got the idea, well, why don't we just publish a whole book 
of stories that are interesting and have embedded errors of increasing difficulty. Right, right. And so the very first version of Fix It, which I asked uh, Pamela White to help with because she is a grammar guru. Guru, mm -hmm. yeah, grammar beyond expert. Yes. Yeah. And so we did that, only it was just like too much all at once. Yep. And there was no parent book to give the, <laughs> to give the, nope. the actual co confirmation of the things that needed to be fixed. So over the years, we've expanded the line, and we now have six uh, fix-it books, starting with uh, book one we recommend, that's the nose tree, around grade four, right? Yep. yep. Uh, so around grade four. And I they go all the way up through six. And I will say, if you yourself, no matter what age you are, you know, 14 or 40 or 92, if you could do fix it six, you would know more technical aspects of English grammar than about 99.9999999999% of all right. English speaking people right. on earth. It's right. I'm not sure I could do fix it right. six, but you don't have to go all the way through. No. You know, it, it, grammar, you know, people say, well, how much grammar is enough? Well, it's kind of like saying how much music is enough. The back cover of our grammar says 15 minutes a day, and that's actually a stretch. It would be hard to stretch this to make out 15 well, minutes. Well, you could if you injected a lot of jokes it's and true. let the kids tell long stories all in they're between doing, yeah, and all they're have an argument about whether Robin Hood was actually a good person or not. Right, because all the kids are doing is fixing one sentence Yeah, it's like a one day. sentence. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and there's four, four days worth. Yeah. And so 10 minutes a day, it, and, and it's relatively painless. It's yeah. not a workbook, and no. there's no you know, getting it right or wrong. Yep. You're just trying to fix it, and then you see if you did. So yep. it's a lot like a game. Yep. And, and the, each sentence expands the story from the previous days. Yep. And so they're interested. What's yep. going to happen next? Yep, yep. So, so the fix it, yeah, and yep. we actually have some packages that bundle together, right? Uh, the teacher book and the student a book. A level of fix it yep. with one of the Oh, yes. And that's, that's not what we're giving away today, but yes, yeah. if you want a structure and style for students level year one, we actually include a fix it grammar as a, in as a, a like a plus package. Plus package. Yeah, yep. exactly. Okay, so that's grammar. All then right. We have, we have poetry. Well, you're going to talk about the poetry. Well, I have been teaching for a very long time in great detail about the huge benefits, neurological benefits, linguistic benefits, even I would argue cognitive and spiritual benefits mm -hmm. of memorizing beautiful language. And you talked about that in your previous talk. Yes, mm -hmm. and you know I could go on and on if you need to be convinced that there's a talk called Nurturing Competent Communicators. That's we can included with this. <laughs> and, and we could link to that because yeah. it's a free download. Yep. I am a Suzuki Method violin teacher, mm -hmm. and I was, as a child, a Suzuki Method violin student. So my orientation towards learning music is you memorize your pieces. Mm -hmm. You learn them by heart, and then you maintain a memorized repertoire. And doing that, you just build that database of music, mm -hmm. and it just serves you so well. Right. You know, even when you're trying to play a new piece of music. Because any new thing in music or language or whatever, it's not so much a new thing as it's a new combination or permutation of a previously mm -hmm. existing thing. Right. So in language, the more language you know, the more creative you can be with new language. So this is essentially a Suzuki method for poetry memorization. There are five levels. Each of the first four levels has a short or long, it gradually increases with the level, poem that I personally liked growing up or I found and I thought, oh, that's appealing to children. A lot of them are humorous or they tell stories. And then level five is excerpts from famous speeches given throughout history. Right. Okay, so there's the book on how to do it. That's right. the teacher book. The teacher book, yeah. And then there's the student book, which is coloring sheets mm -hmm. and the large font, mm -hmm. the poems mm -hmm. in large font, which yep. you may or may not want. Right. And it comes, uh, and it explains how to do this so that you learn poems and never forget them. The goal is to memorize poems and maintain the memorized repertoire really forever. Mm -hmm. That's the goal. Yep. 
And so it explains how to do that with little charts. You can check off mm -hmm. and keep track mm -hmm. if you want. And then um, the uh, recordings. So this comes with CDs mm -hmm. as well as an optional link to download if you don't like discs anymore. Right. Uh, although I, a couple of my kids actually have cars that are so old, <laughs> the cars have CD players. Andrew, our car has a CD and player. And they ask me for CD, <laughs> CDs, so they could play in the car. Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking, that's just like ancient technology. Yeah. Anyway, so you could get the discs, you can download them, and then you can listen and learn. And um, honestly, if you went to YouTube and probably Googled IEW Poetry Memorization or something, or you wouldn't Google on YouTube, you'd just search on YouTube. But you would find countless numbers of children who have memorized poems and are very happy to recite them to everybody. <laughs> okay, what's next? Spelling. Oh, spelling. So you, you'll see what's missing from this package, a spelling workbook. Yeah. Because this is an audio program. My favorite thing about this spelling program is that the kids, once you get them started, can do this independently. Very independently. Yeah. Self-test, self-correct. Mm -hmm. And it works particularly well for children who, number one, have not had good success with a workbook. Right. Um, it's just not catching. Uh, it works well for kids who tend to be more auditory mm -hmm. in their learning. And it works very well for kids who like to do things independently. Like, can I just do this myself? And mom doesn't have to administer it, right? Right. So it's really, and it's designed for individual use. Right. So we do have some <coughs> schools that use this. Yes. And they have learning centers in the schools. I wanted to mention something, though, about schools. We serve all kinds of schools, hybrid schools, Christian schools, public schools. International schools. International schools, yes. And I wanted to mention just something because I held up Bible-based writing lessons. We do have a handful of products that do have Christian content in it, but those are designated on our website. So if you are in a public school program, no problem. We have most of our materials, including our structure and style for students, is uh, completely non-sectarian. You are welcome to use it in any in school schools and charter schools yep. that serve home educating families. Exactly. Also buy. Yep. And the spelling is one of those non-sectarian. Yes, exactly. You can buy easily. Exactly. And it, but if you're in a, a Christian school, then we have materials also that do have Christian like content. Like Bible heroes. Bible heroes would be an, a, yep. just an example. Yes. All okay. right. So that's phonetic zoo. Yeah, the yeah. interesting thing in mastery, see, mm -hmm. unlike you do one a week, mm -hmm. you do the same lesson every day until you get 100% twice in a row. Right. And whether that takes four days or 14 days, it doesn't matter. Right. Yep. And that, that's very, very different than the workbook or you get the list on Monday and you have the test on Thursday and if you get 82%, you get a B minus, you know. Mm -hmm. No, it, you will get 100% on every single lesson, mm -hmm. no matter how long it takes. Yep. And that's, that's teaching a really important intangible, yep. which is you don't just say it's good enough. Right. A, B, a B is good enough. No, it isn't. 100%. Yep. And that's the real world. Yep. I learned from working for you. <laughs> good enough isn't. I didn't name the company Institute for Excellence oh, in true. Writing. All right, what's next? Oh, our phonics program. Oh, the PAL program. All right, good. So there's, there's two pieces to this program. I don't know if I have all the pieces. This is the learn to oh. read part. There it is. There it is. Okay, there you PAL see it. reading, PAL Learn writing. to read, learn to write. Now, let me just tell you a couple things about this, m these materials. It is phonics-based, which, you know, good learn to read and write programs are phonics-based. Mm -hmm. And there are many, many, many out there yes. that are like that. But what's different about ours, what I love about ours, is that the activities, the games, the stickers, there are stickers in here. And there's actually one of these things that I'm holding up here, this is the reading part, is a whole book of games where students, as they're learning, are playing games. And we, we like games around here, don't we? We do a lot of games. Yeah. And I mean, really, life is a game. <laughs> but yeah. you know, children just love games. Yep. If you can teach them something right. while they think they're playing a game, right. they learn it more easily, more right. effectively. And right. like Mary said, after just four lessons of this, or Laura, I guess, after just four lessons of the program, she learned more sounds, blends, and words than in the previous 12 weeks. Yeah, there you go. So, so phonics-based, love that. 
games and activities that are really engaging for the student. Really love that. And my favorite thing about PAL mm -hmm. is it starts them on the structure and style method Getting of writing. Getting into the key. Well, yep. the, the reading is for reading. So that's decoding. It's got the phonetic farm tool. But the writing one is a little more broad in mm -hmm. terms of it's got listening. Mm -hmm. It's got copy work, mm -hmm. which I talked about the importance of that. Oh, right, yep. It's got poetry memorization built in. Well, and the letter formation. Letter the formation. The way, the correct way to hold um, a pencil, all of those things. And our package includes all about spelling, mm -hmm. level one, mm -hmm. with, the, with the manipulative materials. Right. So and just let me just mention that real quick. Our Phonetic Zoo starts about the third or fourth grade level. If you really want to do spelling earlier, which you do when they're first learning mm -hmm. how to read, all about spelling is a, is a good option because we don't have anything for kids that young. But we like that enough that we include that with the PAL. Well, the writing. idea was why redesign something that's very effective. Yeah, for exactly. Now. So, so PAL. So one of you, probably not someone with a high school student, will get the PAL reading and writing. Uh, combination package because they're intended to work together. Like I said, I'm only holding up the PAL reading, but the PAL reading and writing it happens at the same time. And if you, if your child is already reading pretty well, mm -hmm. you know, for the age of five mm -hmm. or six, you may not need basic phonics, but it can help, you know, with the spelling. Uh, but you can get just the PAL writing. Correct. However, if you want to get them together, uh, we do have a bundle. Yep. You save a few bucks. Yep. Yep. And and we do have, as she mentioned first thing this morning, we have an unconditional satisfaction mm -hmm. guarantee. We know that not everything we sell is perfect for every person, mm -hmm. for every kid, every family, every classroom. And that was one of the things I said when I started this company. 27 years ago now, yeah. Almost 27 yep. years ago. I said, I'm going to give everyone 100% satisfaction guarantee. So if they ever buy something and say, ah, this just doesn't work for me. I wish I hadn't bought it. Just send it back. Any condition, it doesn't matter. I would rather you send it back and you get all your money back than for you to have it sit on your shelf and be mad that you bought it. Right. Good. And that has served us very well. It <laughs> We've had lots of people say, Thank you for doing that. Yeah. I might not have bought the program without yep. that guarantee. Yep. We, 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 I almost don't want to say this, but I am going to say that sometimes people think our materials are too expensive. We know, you know, it's very expensive to create a video course, but we know it works. We know it's the best way to learn to write. And people that have bought a lot of things that didn't work and then come back and finally find that our stuff works, they're very happy. And that's what sometimes you'll come into my office and say, are you happy? And I will say, yes. So he wants you to be happy, which is why we have the guarantee. We don't want anybody ever to say, I wish, wish I, I hadn't, hadn't bought, bought that. that. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Anything else here? Oh, yeah. Okay. Just the way that people can contact us. As you mentioned, the podcast mm -hmm. is very, very encouraging yeah. to many people. Yeah. And we sure do go a range of mm -hmm. content yep, from yep. special needs to why teaching writing is like cooking. Yes, we did a cooking show. Um, to motivation, mm -hmm. to talking about home business. Mm -hmm. I, you know, it's pretty much mm -hmm. everything I would touch on. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Uh, the forum, that's basically where what people ask questions and other people mm -hmm. answer them. Yep. So it's a, a big, wide conversation between all of our users. And what I love that is users are on there asking questions and other users are answering their questions with some advice. And of course, we do moderate that. We have some of our own paid staff on there helping to answer questions as well. But it's kind of an open. We have a regular blog. You mm -hmm. can sign up for our e-newsletter and get a link to that. Yep. We have Facebook. And you can also go to YouTube Yep. and hear a lot of the jokes. Yes, yes. So we are here to help. I think that's one. I know that is Andrew's heart. He wants everyone to be successful in this writing journey. And so we're here to help. We have an incredible customer service team. Many are working right here, right now, answering your questions. And so we know that teaching writing can be hard, but we want it to be easier than you think. So thanks for 
And, and look at that picture of Michelle. I know. It's Doesn't she look like the most helpful person you could imagine? That is not a stock photo. No. That is actually one of our gals that ready is. there to answer your question. And so. you know what I really love is she was my student mm. when she was 10 years old. Wow, yep. And now she's, what, 22, I think? Somewhere in that zone, 21, 2. Yep. And uh, just having watched her grow up yeah. and... She, she even taught writing classes mm -hmm. when she was a teenager yep. Yep. to the siblings of, the younger siblings yep. of others of my students. Yep. So We, we yeah. would love for you to come and visit us if you're ever in the Tulsa area. Stop by and visit us. We actually have a couple locations, but I think if you come by to our Bixby campus, IEW Bixby campus, you'll find that on Google Maps, you can meet some of our customer service team. You'll see that right outside the door, is a, a, a rack of books. And this is not necessarily for customers oh, to see. kind of like that. Kind of like <laughs> this. And that way, if any of you have a question about, you know, on page 77 of Following Narnia, you have this, this, I don't really know how to do that. Someone from our team can go up, grab the book, turn to page 77, and be right there to answer your question. They're knowledgeable. All of them, at some level, have taught IEW, and so they're there to help. And we have an incredible, what we call a 911 team, and these are remote staff that help out with chats, with emails. Anyway, we just have an incredible Page team. Page 77 of Following Narnia is a source text on the crown jewels oh. of England oh. for use in Unit 4. Well, there you go. In that case you were wondering. I mean, I, as soon as you said Page 77, I'm like, well, what is Page 77? Yeah. I, I just wanted to mention that if anyone comes to visit us yeah. here, oh yes, 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 I recommend they come early in the day mm -hmm. because that's when we have an abundant supply of our excellent coffee. This is true, which is actually roasted at home by our IT manager, who works a few of his days at home and has a big roasting machine. He only buys the best coffee. And it's so far superior to McDonald's that it, it's not even in the same category of stuff. And also, it's not Starbucks. It's better than Starbucks. I have to show you, this coffee has been calling me. It's been sitting on the table. Well, it might be cold because you have one of these low-tech cups. Mm. I have a high-tech Bluetooth yeah. heating cup. Only it doesn't say IEW. But guess what? It's Yours doesn't I have know, coffee. I know. Mine well, does. that's because you've been talking. I've been drinking. Mm. All right. So what but have we you don't got wanna, here? We don't want to promote his business because we need him here. I didn't say the name of his business. Okay. We're not telling you the name of his no, coffee. No. But if you come and visit us, you can taste his coffee. And then if you're super nice, maybe we'll tell you okay. where you can order it. Maybe. Maybe we should just add it to our catalog. <laughs> IEW branded coffee. <laughs> Cameron, I know you're listening. Eh, not going to happen. All right. All right. These are some questions. Oh, okay. All right. So All right. here we go. So Michelle asks, sh shares this scenario. Her daughter is 10 and we struggle with pencil grip. I don't think it's a fine motor skill issue. She builds with Legos, plays a keyboard, makes necklaces and bracelets with beads, and is creative with other art supplies. Do you have any resources that I can try to help her at this later age? Well, you know, there are those little things you can slide onto a pencil mm -hmm. that kind of force your mm -hmm. fingers to hold a particular shape because mm -hmm. they're molded. Mm -hmm. And those should be readily available mm -hmm. from, you know, Amazon to your mm -hmm. local teacher supply store. Yep. So I might try one of those things. Mm -hmm. it, it's kind of tough because at 10, you may be coming up with a kid who says, I don't want to change. Mm -hmm. I like the way I do it, mm -hmm. even though it's not ideal. Mm -hmm. uh, so it just kind of depends on how cooperative yeah. would that child be to yep. trying to change something a little bit. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like as a violin teacher, you might get a student that comes to you already having played the violin for mm, a year right, or two sure. or more with some kind of bad habits. Right. And, you know, undoing a bad habit is a lot harder than establishing it correctly right. to begin with. Right. But there were little tricks that we could do to, you know, get the little finger on the bow properly or keep the wrist in a particular position. Uh, so I think this device that you can attach to, you slide it on a pen or pencil, mm -hmm. might be helpful. Um, I know that the pens that have 
the slightly softer mm -hmm. right grip uh, are actually more comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, so this pen, you know, Z grip or whatever, it it, it is more pleasant to hold mm -hmm. than a pen that doesn't have the mm -hmm. the softness. So that might be one more yep. thing to look at. But it may also be just is it worth is a hill worth dying on? Yeah. So I wanted you to notice one other thing in Michelle's question. Yes. The very first sentence is, my daughter's 10 and we still struggle with pencil grip. Do you want to oh. talk a little bit about pen versus pencil? Well, um, yeah, I mean, I have said many times and explained that when children are writing, doing English composition on paper, I prefer that they use a pen mm -hmm. rather than a pencil mm -hmm. for several reasons. Uh, one reason is that you cannot erase a pencil. You cannot erase a pen. Right. You can erase a pencil, and I don't want them wasting time erasing. Mm -hmm. I want to train them to just cross out what you don't want and keep going. Right. And that is a lot less stressful than trying to erase and get everything all perfect the first time. Right. So in, in the way I teach, there is no such thing as a first and only mm -hmm version of anything mm -hmm. even even in the very beginning you know kids who are six or seven years old i want them to not erase on the first draft mm -hmm. and then copy it over and then they can type it up or use a pencil that's mm -hmm. fine right. another thing you'll notice is that pencils um, don't give a darker line and most children and particularly children who have say a visual immaturity or they're just on the young side they like darker lines, so they'll actually push mm -hmm. harder, mm -hmm. which would cause the tip of the pencil to break and they'd mm -hmm. have to keep sharpening it, mm -hmm. or um, it can cause tired hand disease. Mm -hmm. So a pen, a black pen, does not require more pressure mm -hmm. in order to get a darker line. Right. So it's, it's just easier and better to use. Yep. Uh, so yeah, I, there's actually an article, maybe we can put up a link, mm -hmm. Um, I think it's convert to pen. Yeah, yeah, that Andrew wrote. Yeah, right. uh, that explained this in a little more detail. Yep, yep. All right. When you say copy work at the primary stage, do you mean I print something for them and they trace it? Or do they copy the words in their own handwriting underneath what I've printed? Well, it just depends on how you would do it, but not tracing. Don't trace. So, you know, there's dispute in the world of early childhood about mm -hmm. whether tracing is a more efficient way to teach children to write letters. Mm -hmm. The research shows that children use a lot more of their brain when they're trying to copy a pattern rather than trace a pattern. Right. But there may be some value, say for example, in Maria Montessori's sandpaper letters mm -hmm. and that. Mm -hmm. But when I say copy work, I mean, here's text and here's a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to copy the words mm -hmm. and the phrases and the sentences from here to hear. Yep. Now, young children, what she's saying is it might be line under line. Right. The problem with that is the child might not be able to write small enough to fit mm -hmm. what they're copying under the line of the text that's there, mm -hmm. in which case that has to be plenty big, right. or trying to quickly get them to move where they can look at a word, copy it, look mm -hmm. at the next word, copy it, look at two or three words in a row, right. copy that. And, and in a way, it's also conducive to like slow motion reading because mm -hmm. you're trying to look and copy and look back and see it again and right. again. You're kind of contemplating. Right. Although it is possible for children to copy something and have no idea what, they, what they're copying. Right. And that's not a de facto bad thing right. either. Um, but copy work, it builds um, stamina. Mm -hmm. It builds confidence. It, you're co if you're copying something that's correct, in terms of complete sentences, capitals, yes. periods, punctuation, mm -hmm. whatever, then you're actually programming the, the mind mm -hmm. with correct language, right. as opposed to just write whatever you could think of, right. Right? Yep. Yep. which is what a lot of schools do, I think, at too early of an age. Right. So yes, now you do want to be sure that the print of whatever you're copying is large enough for the child to see easily. Mm -hmm. So if you're having them copy something and the source is a book that has 12-point font yeah. or smaller, yeah. which would be most books, mm -hmm. 
um, try to enlarge that. Mm -hmm. If you're uh, copying something that you got online, then change the font, make it bigger, yep. and then it's going to be easier. The other thing is give them something that they can write on mm -hmm. so that when they finish a sentence, they can put a little mark or they could just cross out the sentence they copied and then they know right where to go to get the next thing. So, you know, it, you try to make it visually as easy as possible, yep. even for kids who are going to find it visually challenging. Mm -hmm. Yep, good. Okay, Jessica has a daughter. Once a child has a correct sto stroke order with writing, when do you suggest is the best time to begin cursive? That's really a question that is not easy to answer. There are schools, I have been in them, and I have known people who have done cursive first, right. who have actually started right. the process of learning to write letters with a child probably around six years old, mm -hmm. and not learning printing first. Right. And there are some very good arguments mm -hmm. as to this. Number one, 150 years ago, everybody learned cursive first, nobody printed first. Right. So it's obviously possible. Mm -hmm. Another argument is that if you print first and then shift to cursive, it can take months, many months, until the child can write in cursive as fast and as easily as they could print. Mm -hmm. And nobody likes going backwards. Mm -mm. Nobody likes remediation or slowing right. down. Right. It's frustrating. Right. So that's another argument in favor of cursive first. Mm -hmm. And just doing cursive first doesn't mean you can't also learn printing. Right. You know, maybe calligraphy or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if you already did printing and you want to say, okay, when to start cursive, you kind of want to build up and make it seem like a really good and special thing. I remember, I think the teachers in third grade, which is when most of us in our age group got that cursive, the teachers were like, oh, now know. you get to learn the very, very adult-like thing mm -hmm. called cursive writing, so you can sign your name and right. enter legal contracts and borrow money, you know. Um, so, you know, there's a, a way that teachers had of mm -hmm. making it seem like this is a great thing to yeah. do. Yeah. Um, not all the students bought into that argument. I did. Of I was super excited. Did, yeah. yes. So, um, but I don't know, you know, do you have to wait a certain point? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. And if a child is interested mm -hmm. and says, oh, I really want to do that, mm -hmm. then capitalize on that interest yep. and see what you can do, even if it's younger than, say, third grade. Right, good. Carol, I'm sorry, Kerry asks, what should I do when my child wants to recite a passage I read to him instead of giving a narration? Well, memory? Y that means, well, th yeah, that means, number one, that child has a tremendously good memory. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with him doing that, so I wouldn't worry about it, yeah. him or her, I don't know which. And it shows you could probably increase mm -hmm. the sophistication of what you're reading, mm -hmm. or that child just has an amazing, miraculous, photographic style of auditory memory. Right, right. So just defining terms, reciting would be saying it word for word, almost, right? And narration would be just telling it back in their own words. Well, I would never say in your own words because nobody owns any words. Right. Right, they're all available. Yes. And you know, it's kind of like people have the same question with our keyword outline. What mm -hmm. if the child writes it out exactly like the original? Yeah. That is not a problem. Right. But what it does mean is you can up the reading level of the source text. Yep. And if you work through the units, as soon as you get to unit three, and certainly by the time you get to unit five, mm -hmm. that's not even possible, no. so it's not a problem. Yep. But that would be you know, an indicator that that child just is blessed with a tremendously good memory. But I wouldn't, I would never try to say, don't say it exactly the way the book was, try mm -hmm. to say it differently, because mm -hmm. that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to a kid. Yep. Why? Mm -hmm. Why say it differently? Why not say it the way it was? Yep. Instead, just increase the complexity so they can't quite remember everything word for word. Right, yep, good. Kristen has a question. Do you have a recommendation of a website for audiobooks for the primary and elementary ages? For the preschool ages, is Mother Goose Club on TV too hyper-stimulating, or is it best just to do the audio version of that? And I'm just going to do a little plug for We Sing, that's W-E-E, -E, We Sing. Yeah. They do a nursery rhyme one. Oh. That's all Mother Goose. Okay, great. Which is 
It's all audio. It's all and, audio. And it's they tell this little story and it's super cute, but they they actually recite the poems. So, but that would be my recommendation. Mm -hmm. But well, I, I I don't know this particular show. What was it? Mother, Mother Goose, Goose Club. Club. Yeah. I I don't know it. Mm -hmm. In fact, the only TV that I ever see my grandchildren watching is Little Bear. Oh, okay. That's all they ever seem to watch. <laughs> That, and some of them want, the Swiss Family Robinson, which is, you know, violent. <laughs> but, uh, so, I, I look at Little Bear and I say, okay, what, what advantages do we have here? It is clean. Mm -hmm. The illustrations are not crazy, animated, distracting. It's more like frames. In fact, I saw a beautiful version of Peter Rabbit, mm. which was simply the illustrations in the book from Beatrix Potter. With someone reading the book. Nice. And so it wasn't even animated. Right. It was just the mm -hmm. picture, you know, the page turn, the yep. page turn. So I would think things like that would be ideal. A book being read mm -hmm. with the pictures on the video mm -hmm. rather than an animated, you know, fast motion kind of thing. So Kristen, here's what I did for my granddaughter. I read books to her. She lives in California, I'm in Oklahoma, and I send her the videos. So harness the power of your grandparents and get grandma to read to your children. And Genevieve does that to me too. Aww. She'll say, Xavier wants to know if you can read him a book. Oh, nice. And so we get on the, you know, the FaceTime mm -hmm. or nice. Skype or whatever. Yeah. And I just, you know, read the book and show the picture and read the book yeah. and show, and he'll just, he'd watch that all day yeah. if I had time to do it. And Scar Skype has a recording feature, so you could actually record that, and that way he can watch Maybe it later. This is too. like a whole new line of things I could get into. Re Maybe. Grandpa Andrew reads. reads. <laughs> there, there is a guy on YouTube channel who is reading a book a day, and they're picture books. Oh. And I subscribe to that. I can't oh. remember his name, but I will be sure that our customer service team posts that in the conversation. Yeah, you could probably just go to Google and say, a guy on YouTube who reads a book every day to children yeah, or something. Yeah, it was, it's really cute. And he, and he does uh, the classic books that I grew up with, Mike Mulligan and the Steam Shovel, oh, Norman Blueberries the Dorman. Yes. Sal. Exactly, right. Oh, so priceless. Just goes, yeah. Okay, what is the high school curriculum? This is all from your previous conversation, okay. I'm sure. Yes. What is the high school curriculum that teaches the Socratic discussion? Uh, so yes, my friend Adam Andrews, many, 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 many years ago, came to my writing seminar. Mm -hmm. And uh, his wife was also there, and they were homeschooling family. Mm -hmm. And his wife said, well, you know, my husband does this seminar. It's kind of like for literature, for reading and talking about l books, mm -hmm. the way you're teaching writing. Mm -hmm. it, it breaks it into small, mm -hmm. manageable, yep. very concrete steps. Yep. And uh, uh, the approach is a Socratic one. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, rather than having a workbook where you fill in the blank to prove that you understood what you read or something, this is more like, okay, let's all read a book. And he even, st he recommends start with short stories, yep. even with high school kids. Yep. But uh, you start with a, a book or a story, and then you have a list of questions, mm -hmm. and you can practice asking the questions about the various aspects of the story. So... Style and context, setting, characters, conflict, plot, theme, and then he talks about a curriculum for literature. Yeah. And it has his Socratic list with 173 discussion questions yep. for use with any story. Because you wouldn't use every question for every story. Right. The, this is the second edition. The first edition, I actually did all the video editing, if you can believe that. I, I do know that. I did all the video editing for that first product, and in listening to it, you know, like 10 times, because that's what you have to do, or more when yes. you're video editing, I learned it well enough that I just had kind of a, a huge leap forward mm -hmm. in my liking, yep. and I'm assuming also my, my proficiency, in discussing books with, with kids. Right. And the same techniques work for uh, high school as work for younger children as well. We have an article uh, that we'll be sure and have someone post about Andrew doing a high school literary consortium. What did you call that? A literary, you don't remember either. Colloquium. Colloquium, yes. Colloquium. So we'll, yes. we'll post that in the chat so you can see Andrew. And, and doing that. they could read more about this also at uh, 
at their website, yep. which is centerforlit. Centerforlit.com. All one word, centerforlit. Yep, that's a good one. Thanks so much for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more, you can subscribe to this podcast in iTunes, Google Play, or Stitcher, or just visit us each week at IEW.com slash podcast. Until then, on behalf of Andrew Pudua and the team at IEW, I thank you for allowing us to partner with you on your journey toward better listening, speaking, reading, writing, and thinking.